G'day everyone, I uh, hope you're doing well. I'm Berkey and yeah, as that introduction said, I'm presenting on uh, Terraform Agents and Achieving Zone Isolation. So um, you can see, get back onto the Google Slides. You see, I'm Berkey, I work uh, in the pre-sales team at HashiCorp in Australia. And what I want to talk to you today is set a bit of a scene regarding why agents exist, why they are super, and how they come about due to what I call the boxes of sadness. Now, if you've dealt with uh, any sort of IT infrastructure, the reality is you've come across security controls, security requirements, firewalls, and firewalls being aptly known as the boxes of sadness. The reality is there are varying zones of trust, varying levels of permission, both on premises and within the cloud. If that's a data classification tier, if that is a security requirement, whatever it may be that dictates a set of rules around a perimeter, um, they are generally controlled by a firewall, controlling what comes in, controlling what goes out on a per application and process basis. Now, traditionally that's resulted in a number of things. One, firewall burns. It results in the firewall burns. It results in money being spent on those uh, firewall burns, the costly element of the change, including things such as um, getting the ports right, getting them correct, getting all of those things involved. Well, what's going on there? And as such, you see that they become a laggard to the speed of development and the speed of how people want to do IT these days. Now, if you look at the plumbing of a infrastructure, and I say it's back to Bilio, it is an Australian colloquialism for a blocked sewage pipe, is that you have to engage many teams the different enclaves need to be protected. So if you have one-to-one -one mapping of a firewall, that's great. But what about zone one to zone three, zone three to zone seven, zone seven to zone 10? All of those different rules need to be applied. And if I'm gonna take advantage of a SAS offering, I've got to build those rules out, both ingress and egress. Most often than not, building out firewall rules to ingress an environment from the outside untrusted world to inside is a no-go, right? They're generally controlled by a DMZ and they are somewhat slow. Then if something changes on the outside world, it's if the source address changes, if something on the cloud changes by one of these hosted providers, can the ingress handle that? And are the current rules up to date? All of this is essentially building a precarious house of cards, which in the end of the result, the people who use these SaaS offerings don't really need to know about, but they can impact the jobs they do. So with that preamble set, Let's introduce Terraform agents and a way that we approach solving this problem, which means that you don't have to worry about firewalls as much. Terraform Cloud being a SaaS offering offers the ability to manage and deploy agents into these private enclaves or networks, be it on premises on a vSphere infrastructure or KVM infrastructure. If it's a private cloud environment, let's say you've got an Amazon enclave or an Azure enclave, you're deploying workloads into a bubble you will have workloads that sit behind certain firewalls where they can't readily have ingress access. You can't open up the security group rules to go into um, an environment. They are sitting there behind, uh, they're, they're essentially their iron wall. What we can do is host agents in these environments that phone home on the regular making an outbound connection to Terraform Cloud. Now, this means that no firewall rules are required other than 443, which is open generally outbound on nearly every single provider and on-premises environment to the internet, and that can be via a proxy. And it's available as run a binary for a runtime or can be scheduled as a Docker container or on Kubernetes or Nomad. And this allows me then to provide Terraform Cloud functionality to have the Terraform code execute inside these enclaves. Now, what we can do is we can set up multiple pools of these agents. Now I can have not just uh, one enclave environment, I can set up numerous enclaves that allow me to have access to various sites. So for example, there's a construct in the demo we'll go through, which is a Terraform workspace. And I can pin that workspace to an agent pool, which means I can then say, when you're running this Terraform code, and if it's a version control change, and I'm doing my, my, my GitOps, right? And it goes through, and executes that run, it goes cool. The pool assigned to me is instead of just being resolving it from Terraform Cloud and we spin up that container and do a Terraform plan and apply for you, that's happening on the agent on your behalf. So what happens is the agent's phoning home, there's a job assigned to it, it pulls it down, it executes that change for you, which means it can resolve that vCenter locally or it can resolve that private infrastructure that is normally behind 
a very large firewall and a lot of rules that's normally unresolvable. And that means then I can do my configurations at an organization level. I set my pools up at a workspace level. I assign a agent pool to a workspace. And this can be then all managed by an API if desired as well. So it makes it a very uh, streamlined process to take advantage of this configuration. So the crux of today's uh, demonstration is going to be on agents, setting them up, deploying them. And I'll go through the demo environment I have and how that works so you get a feel for it. Um, this topic is super exciting, but it's also super sort of, it's a bit of table stakes. People expect this from a SaaS offering. If you've used GitLab, GitLab or GitHub agents, it's the same sort of concept, but using these in tandem or using them in isolation result in better, abil better ability to uh, react to uh, these environment changes. So let's have a look here at uh, the overview. So what the high level overview we're gonna do here is deploy an agent, we're going to see it phone home. It's going to watch for jobs because it's an outbound poll back to SAS because we have no way to reach into an environment. It's going to phone home and keep polling the SAS offering. Well, we're going to execute a code change in this demo. We're going to execute, see the job get executed. And then we're going to see that feedback come back into the, uh, the UI of Terraform Cloud. So yeah, again, set up the agents, do the con code change and then watch that modification happen. So. Whilst the setup's pretty straightforward, I'm going to do this from soup to nuts. So you're going to see the setup of these agents. You'll see them fight, you check in. I'll do a quick code change. And then you're just going to see me do logical configuration over my Nomad infrastructure. Um, and my Nomad infrastructure is going to be, I'm doing the logical, logical configuration of an application. So setting up namespaces, setting up quotas, setting up resource allocations, the things that would do uh, in the infrastructure as code approach. All right. One bit of two bits of code first to get you a feel for what we're doing, and then the diagram, and we'll get right into it. I am running my Terraform uh, agent on my Nomad infrastructure on premises. So my Nomad is a application scheduler. It can run containers. It can run um, non-containerized applications. It has a Docker backend, right? Given that we deliver this as a Docker container, I choose to run it on Nomad. You can run this on uh, as simple as a by a Linux process, if you want to set up as a service or as a Linux process, run it natively in Docker, schedule it to K8s. Whatever your, your choice is here, we give you the flexibility as HashiCorp to choose how you want to run that agent. The alternative here is running it here as a, you can see here as a individual Docker image. Now, the considerations you need to think about from this perspective here is availability. You want to make sure that if these environments, to, these agents turn off, they're going to restart. You make sure they can find a home always so that your runs aren't interrupted. And what happens, we spoke about numerous times, is here when you do a run, and I will show this off live in a moment, is that what's going to happen at each step of the, the phase here. I can see here that I have a job received, a certain run executes with a run ID, to a certain workspace, a Terraform agent snapshot workspace. It goes off and downloads Terraform. It will go off and download my configuration, do a Terraform init, a Terraform plan, and then do a Terraform apply appropriately. And you can see here that the agent is these are the steps that it will take. All right, so let's get into the demo. And because my phone's rang, iTunes pops up. All right, let's do this. So you can see here under Terraform Cloud, we can see we have an agents tab, right? And you're gonna see some errored agents here because these are the ones I tore down only two hours ago when I tested out my demo. You know, prior preparation prevents poor performance and all of that. So I made sure I tested this a few times and recorded a video. So I can see here, I have three agent pools. I have my vSphere US West, where I have an agent running inside a vSphere environment over in America. I have a test pool of a new agents where there's no agents that have come online yet. And I have my home network. Right, so I'm going to create agent pool and I want to make a test for snapshots. I'll create that agent pool. And from there, I can start creating tokens. I can call this like uh, agent one, for example, right? And go, okay. Create my token, get assigned a one time token, which won't be displayed again. Save that token. And literally, I get the code here to run my Docker command to run that agent. Paste that into my workplace, a work a load of choice behind in that enclave and Terraform is going to get access to this environment. So in the interest of a live demo, we do things live here. I'm going to do nomad uh, job run agent nomad, right? And I can see that I'm deployed my nomad node and on my nomad node, I'm going to have 
my agent run. And I'm going to run for redundancy. I'm going to have a second one run because we should have some redundancy. I can see there very quickly, two Terraform agents have been scheduled on my node. What Nomad's done is taken that job file I displayed before, which we can see in the Terraform uh, configuration before, sorry, in that configuration of my presentation, we can see uh, the code here. It takes the job, it schedules a job as a Docker job. It sets up the Terraform address, the agent, the name. I'm retrieving my configuration from HashiCorp Vault, my secret token that I've placed there, um, which is you can do to improve your configuration. But that's as simple as what it does there. It spins up, it runs. Now, phoning home, if I look back to my agent pool, I can see now, whilst the old ones are errored out, that's the previous runs, the current runs that have been spun up are a few seconds ago they checked in, right? You can see my my IP address, my Terraform agent 01, Terraform agent 02. They map to the jobs that I've just run. Fantastic. So now I have access to my on-premises infrastructure, right? I've My slide wasn't in the best order, but that's the topology that we've run. So I've just spun up a Terraform agent here on the inside of my infrastructure, and it's phoning home to Terraform Cloud. Now, what that means is here, if I go to the workspace Terraform agent snapshot, to ensure that I take advantage of this infrastructure, I'll go to general, and I look at my execution mode. So you can have remote execution mode, which means I can actually run uh, my Terraform code against Terraform Cloud infrastructure. I can have locally when I'm using Terraform Cloud purely for state storage. And I have my third option being agent execution. Now agent execution will manage and uh, their plans and applies to my agents. So I can pick any number of pools that I have here, right? And those pools will deploy uh, on my behalf. So what happens is, is the following. When I run my code, it's going to execute against that agent pool. So I'm going to go into VS Code. I'm going to configure Let's do a, a deployment of this. So this here, the code here for those reading along at home is Terraform code for the Nomad provider. I'm accessing here a private address, which is not accessible by the internet, which is actually my Nomad cluster running on my computer here behind me. I have some scheduler configuration I wanna change, some quotas and team specification stuff. Excuse me, and then those namespaces. So I'm expecting that to do a change. I'm just gonna trigger a force change here by changing the memory allocation. I will save that commit, change for snapshot is the commit. So I'm taking advantage of Terraform here doing this for me. Um, I want to commit just that change there, Berkey. Yes, I do. Save on commit and push, right? And what we're going to see is this come through the pipeline. So we're going to see a run occur. So Terraform will see the run come in. It's going to see that start the run, it's going to start applying that, and then it's going to start provisioning that infrastructure for me. So give it a second, we can see here, so change for snapshots come in, which matches exactly what I ran before. The key difference here, so I can see that this run ID has been assigned, the GitHub configuration from my Pandem branch, you can see TF Asian snapshot, the commit ID, I've errored out, fantastic, I've missed the R, uh, I put the S in there, so thanks for catching me on that one, everyone. <laughs> so what happens when you have fat fingers and do things live, click save, We'll do the change again. Fat fingers. All right. That just proves that this is live in all fun and games. You can see here the agent pool home network has been selected. And from that pool, an individual agent has been chosen. So agent two. This is where some of the design thought behind having multiple agencies gives me redundancy in case one goes down. I can always be doing my changes. So you can see my fat finger change. Let's do a time walk back 30 seconds. <laughs> and what we do is we can see here, Terraform planning occurring. Nomad agent two was chosen again. The plans occurred, it's happy with my code. I got some undeclared variables from other stuff, the code that I, I took. Um, and you'll see cost estimation occurring. So if I'm using any public assets here, it gets a costed API if, if need be. And then it's going to apply that to the environment there. So that will take another 15 seconds. And from that, what's happening here at the same time, my agents that are running here are going to be configuring Nomad for me. So in about 30 seconds time, I'm going to get a namespace box up here. I'm going to get my quotas up here. And I'm going to see all of these things that I haven't seen before, which is great. So once that goes green, you can see that. If you're an administrator of your environment, you're going to see the Nomad agent status 
so it's busy. So the idea here is if I had um, all my agents inside my pool busy and I had jobs being queued, I look at probably deploying a few more agents, right? Of which I can see I'm using three out of my 10 agents. That's been run, it's been applied. I can see awesome. I've got things configured for me. That's great. I've got um, some new namespaces for snapshot and web. I have some scheduler configuration changes. Now, if I go here and refresh my UI, chuka, 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 chuka. I've got my namespace box. I can see here my snapshot's been made with namespace and my web namespace. And if I do nomad uh, quota list, I can see my quota there. Nomad quota show snapshot. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, inspect. Sorry, it's from my hard, hard uh, wide Kubernetes background into me there, uh, snapshot. And I can see here that my chain I just did via Terraform Cloud, via a version control change, has been pushed down or pulled down on premises, and then executed locally, which is fantastic. That's the whole idea. Now, if I want to run a delete against that, same thing. I can go to my workspace here. I can go to settings, delete. And I can then revert that change, cure destroy plan, right? And the, the reverse is going to happen there. So I get my whole GitOps style, no matter where my workload runs, which is super. So what's the what's the the uh, the, the too long didn't read about that is that if I go here, I'm just going to drag that slide there and make things nice. Essentially, lets me take uh, bring the SaaS offering on premises without having to worry about firewall changes that are expensive and slow. I can execute my version control repo, be it on premises, be it against cloud environment or assets and other in the environments with the same workflow. Deploying agents is a trivial step. We did this end to end with an uh, involved sort of, you know, discussion and demo in 20 minutes, right? And I can start bringing out there. Tell me anyone who's done a firewall change in an enterprise in 20 minutes, right? Having worked at triple zero, that stuff doesn't take 20 minutes, right? It takes a long time with a lot of collaborative effort because they, they are big uh, cumbersome things, right? That's the reality of firewalls. And then you look at uh, how quickly we got on to doing changes on premises with Terraform, right? Thanks to the Terraform agent. So that is Terraform agents uh, is a feature of Terraform Cloud. Have a chat to your local friendly Terraform SE, be it me, Cam, uh, anyone locally to your teams in the relevant geographies. But um, I'm Berkey. Thank you for your time today. I hope this demo was super enjoyable. If you've got any questions, Berkey at HashiCorp or Pandem underscore on Twitter. If you want to learn more, jump onto learn.hashicorp.com. We have all of our training online, all free hands-on stuff to get involved. If you want to see more of these cool little snapshots, these bite-sized takeaways, check out the uh, event snapshots page.